if you know how to do it, if you can get yourself to just do it, you wouldn't be in this situation to begin with. It sucks. It drains you. It makes you not like life. Holding hope and optimism is not the same thing as rep repressing negative potentials. The fundamental thing that you need to do is play a better mental commercial. Alrighty, guys, I got one more thing for you today. So scrolling through Reddit, uh, this this guy, he's he's dealing with some chronic uh, procrastination here. He, he, he actually said, I have been unable to do homework all week. And while I know my brain will go, oh, hey, deadline, I can start this at 8 p.m. I need to start it now because I have more crap than four hours of effing off will allow. So, mm. Mark, what would you suggest to somebody like this? Because I know we've probably all fallen into this at some point. Right, right. And so this kind of stuff is something that uh, people definitely struggle with regularly. It's like, how do I get myself to get started? I'm supposed to just start this thing. I think one of the first issues, um, you know, for someone who wants to be highly productive is you got, got to make sure you have the right plan. Because like most people, they just got crappy advice. Like this one is just like, start with one small thing, find the smallest part of the project and do it. And just do it, just do it, just start it and do it. Ah, yeah. And this is the most upvoted comment. Okay. Um, this whole start with the smallest thing, okay, that's not that's not bad advice. But the just do it, just do it, just do it, okay? That doesn't that doesn't solve anything for someone. It's like if you know how to do it, if you can get yourself to just do it, you wouldn't be in this situation to begin with, right? Basically, when someone is saying <laughs> this, what they're saying is grind against yourself and get really upset. And, go, and it's just like, oh, wait. So my whole strategy for getting better in life is to just like induce high amounts of internal pressure. That's your plan. It's like no wonder people don't make progress because you do that for a while. It sucks. It drains you. It makes you not like life. It makes you not like yourself because you basically have to become a bully to yourself. And this is something I talk about with like this whole discipline versus devotion concept. Um, yeah, it's like, um, you know, another person saying, talking about doing prep work before real work. Again, not bad, but it doesn't really solve the thing. Um, here's, what, here's what I think you need to do. If you really want to activate the fundamental thing that you need to do is play a better mental commercial. That's the most important thing. The reason why you don't want to do the thing is because when you think about doing the thing, either consciously or unconsciously, a shitty commercial plays. It's like you think about doing the homework and you just think, oh, there's me struggling with these math problems or, oh, there's me getting lost or, oh, there's me just reading this super boring thing. And your, your brain imagines that and then it produces the subsequent feelings of aversion. And then you don't want to do it. And for most guys, this visualization kind of happens beneath the surface and they just feel the feeling of resistance. But like you can tune into it. You can find it. You just got to look at it. It's like, oh, what's the commercial I'm playing that's producing this emotion? And you can find it. And what you need to do is make a better commercial, right? Like you have to sell yourself, okay? And you can. You can sell yourself. All you got to do is imagine, well, what are the benefits I stand to gain from this? What if this was actually enjoyable? What if you like pictured yourself like sitting down, uh, you know, all cozy with some music on with a nice cup of tea, just like, you know, steadily working through your math problems like it was like an interesting puzzle, okay? What if you, you know, were thinking about, oh, what is what does this degree help me do? Oh, I want to become more like educated in literature. There's a lot of value in that. If like you got a book to read or whatever. Build a commercial that resonates with you. Find a way to look at this task that you're doing um, as something that actually fits with you. It's something that you want. And when you can figure out and visualize it like that, guess what's going to follow? Your emotions. And you're going to actually want to start doing it. It's going to be There's going to be way, way, way less resistance. In fact, uh, one technique that you can use that I developed is like imagine yourself – already in the midst of the act imagine like oh what if i was doing my what if i was doing this thing and loving it what would that feel like what would that look like imagine that you are that person and and, and start feeling gratitude for being that person and for whatever reason when you think about it like that it's so easy to activate. It's basically, it's like you're tapping into the frequency of like someone who's, you know, locked in positively to that activity. You're tapping into that frequency. You're tuning your your brain to it. 
And then once it's tuned in, then your body kind of just follows along. It's kind of like, oh, we're tapped into the right radio signal and it's going to, you know, guide us to actually creating that reality in us. So to say it again, it's like you imagine what it would feel like if you were already fully in that thing. So this is what I do when I'm trying to get myself out of bed in the morning. That's where I struggle the most with activation, especially when I'm getting up early, like I was talking about previously, is like, I don't think about, oh, you got to get out of bed. Oh, just get out. Uh, you know, push yourself. Blah. No, I imagine myself already fully dressed, sitting with like, you know, a cup of tea, like deep in like the work that I love. I imagine myself doing that and I imagine that I already am that guy and I feel gratitude for it. And then for whatever reason, my body just like, oh, is that what we're programmed to do? That's what we're doing. And then my body just like goes and tries to align itself with that good vision. Um, and it takes a little while sometimes to really build that commercial up when I'm a little groggy in the morning, but you can do this with anything. Find the state you want to be in, imagine it, build a commercial for it, and then go for it, right? Um, I could do a whole course on this kind of stuff, but just start playing around with this because this is the sort of thing that's going to make a, a real difference other than this horrible, not hor not horrible advice, but just advice that's really just going to leave you grinding against yourself. One more thought I wanted to share with you guys. What I wanted to talk about is just something that I've, I've noticed with um, anxiety and stress and a lot of times even just resistance with things. Um, just a, a little bit of a framework. Like if you're trying to – like if you've got something that you're really worried about or you've got something that you're feeling a lot of aversion to um, – Yes, the mental commercial stuff is really powerful, but there's another way that we can look at this, like right? beyond just giving ourselves more positive mental commercials about the thing we're trying to do. Usually what's going on is that there's some level of repression going on. If you are repressing some reality or some potential reality, then that's where most of our resistance and anxiety comes from. And so... What we got to do <clears throat> if we want to be in a state where we are free, we're full of peace, we're motivated, we're aligned, and we're not just like gears grinding on the inside is we have to be able to just keep a keep our attention right in here. And as soon as we start feel stuff grinding, we got to ask ourselves, what reality or potential reality am I fighting against right now? What reality or potential reality am I telling myself, oh, that is not okay, or that would make you not okay. So if we do the example of the guy who's got to you know, make a presentation or something like that, <clears throat> he's feeling a lot of resistance around it. And we start. To, he tries to make do a positive mental commercial where he imagines himself doing it well and you know the benefit he would get if he nails this presentation. Um, and it's just not working. There's something that's still not clicking. Usually that's because there's he's repressing – uh, some potential outcome. So maybe he's afraid of not knowing what to say in the presentation and facing the blank paper. Okay. In that case, he's got to accept that. He's like, listen, I don't know what I'm going to say. And as soon as you accept that reality, you can say, well, what am I going to do about it? I'm going to maybe just brainstorm a little bit. I'll spend a few minutes brainstorming. All of a sudden, you're going to feel less resistance. Maybe he's afraid of you know, what, what people would say about it. Okay, you know, the worst case scenario is that his boss hates it. And so he's 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 repressing that potential reality where there's still, you know, he knows objectively there's some percentage chance that his boss just doesn't like what he does. And so what if instead of running from that reality and trying to push it out of his head and tell himself no, he says, "Well, okay, that is a potential reality. What what would happen if I accepted that?" Okay, well, you know, would I be okay if my boss didn't like this or my teacher didn't like this presentation? Well, how would I be okay? What would I have to do? Well, could I talk to him about it afterward? Could I, you know, blah, blah, blah. And like usually even in the process of doing this, you realize, okay, maybe that's not even the, the, a, a high level potential here. Maybe that's not even likely and you start feeling better. The, the key here is like you got to look at what you're afraid at. Or you got to look at what you are afraid of because if you don't do that, if you start trying in your brain because you've got some kind of emotional motivation to start trying to push certain potentials away because they're scary because they don't feel good that it's like it's creating these dark spots in your psyche 
And because of that, the energy stops flowing through your whole unit properly. You start feeling, you know, you know, all, all bound up and stuff. It's kind of like, you know, if you look at a, you imagine like an old mechanical clock, it's got all these gears fitting together that all have to move together. If you just go in there and start pulling out gears, it's just going to stop working, right? And that's essentially what we do when we let our fears lead us to repress potential outcomes. It's like, um, this guys do this all the time when it comes to approaching women. It's like, oh, uh, I feel all this anxiety. Why? Because you're you're trying to eliminate the possibility that the woman would reject you because you're afraid of that possibility. What if you already accepted that that was a possibility and you already made peace with it? Well, then at that point, it's not nearly as scary because you know you, you're living in reality, not fighting against it. And it's not even reality as it is; it's reality as it could be, right? So you still have the p- power to try and move everything in the direction that you want. And this is why you got to learn how to hold that hope, hold that optimism. But holding hope and optimism is not the same thing as rep- repressing negative potentials. So hopefully this kind of thinking is useful to you because uh, the more I examine my own feelings, the more I, f- I look at my own negative emotions that come up, there's almost always some form of of repression going on. There's some reality that I don't want to look at, some thought, some fear, some outcome that I'm treating like the boogeyman and I'm saying, stay away. Oh, I don't want that. But as soon as I (laughs) actually bring it closer, I look at it, I accept it. I find out how I would be okay if things did go that way. Or uh, sometimes it's just how things are. And I accept it. Oh, this is the game I'm playing. How do I want to respond? As soon as I do that, so much of the negative emotion just disappears. Um, And this is what really taking ownership of your reality looks like. It means taking ownership of all the reality, not trying to hide from any of it, present or potential in the future. And if you do that, well, then uh, you get less bound up. You're not so resistant. You're not feeling so much negative energy. And it's a lot easier to make progress toward the things you do want. So hopefully you found that useful. What did you think of that, Pete? That's super helpful. And you know... There's, I took a a speech class one time and the professor said, before you go up and present to the class, give yourself permission to fail, to mess up, to make mistakes, to say words wrong, to do all of it. Because when you give yourself permission to do it, you stop fighting against doing it. So you actually loosen up quite a bit. And it's kind of interesting. It's counterintuitive, but it's kind of along the similar lines of what you're saying. Yeah. And to be clear, this is not saying that we're aiming for failure or we're lowering our sights or or like trying to manifest failure or anything like that. Like some people, they do do that. They're like, oh, you know, I'm going to fail. So, you know, I might as well just lean into that failure and just like not give a crap. You know, that's the person. What they're doing is they're repressing their potential for success. They're afraid of success because, you know, if they take success off the table, then, oh, that feels better. It's not even an option for me, so who cares, right? It's like, no, we're saying accept it all. Accept your potential for success. Accept all the good in your life, but also accept your potential for failure and also accept all the stuff in your life you don't like. Accept it all. And it's only from there, from that fully – filled in picture of reality, will you be able to make the best decisions about where you should go? Otherwise, there's going to be these massive dark spots in your vision and your brain just projects, you know, tigers and monsters and boogeymen into all those black spots. So it's like, you know, shine the light on them, see what's there. And it's never as scary as the thing that you imagine is there. 